Hey guys, it's Kevin from my review for Midsummer. And what Midsummer is essentially about is we center on this couple, Christian and Danny, and they are in a spot where their relationship just isn't really working out. You can tell that they just do not have that connection that they used to, but they continue to remain in this relationship uh, due to a personal tragedy that Danny is going through. So one day when Christian and all of his friends are invited to this, uh, this festival that one of their friends is uh, attending, basically, they decide that they're going to go. And what they don't know, though, is that this festival is actually um, part of this really sinister cult. So what starts off as a trip of something that's going to be very peaceful and a community that's welcoming them with open arms really starts to show its much more sinister side. And basically now uh, these five characters have to try to find a way to navigate, get out of the situation, but also try to do what they can to also get Danny and Christian to really confront uh, what they're hiding. And that's really all I'm going to say. So, Midsummer overall, I was obviously hyped for this film, and how can I not be? This is another film by Ari Aster, who just one film in already has solidified himself as a horror mastermind. But when you're coming off a film like Hereditary, I mean, there was a huge expectation that is uh, coming out of you. That was a film that was just... Um, right out of the gate. Such a huge success. It was very well character driven. It was uh, just so terrifying throughout and especially and I've, I've rewatched it several times now and it's still just as uh, compelling and still I think just as impactful as it was on that first watch. Um, and so because of that, you know, I was a little bit worried though too because of how great that film was. I was worried that it was just going to be lightning in a bottle. I really wasn't sure if Ari Aster was going to be able to deliver another really great film, but I have to say he absolutely Absolutely did so here. Uh, Midsummer is a fanta another fantastic installment uh, from Ari Aster for sure, who really has proven to be one of the best uh, talents out there right now. But we're just going to get into right now, starting off with the cast. And similar to Hereditary, that is a huge uh, standout here for sure. The entire cast, really, everyone does a fantastic job. But in the same way that Tony Collette last year was the big standout in Hereditary, that is true to Florence Pugh uh, this year. She is phenomenal in this movie, and what a year she's having between this from Fighting My Family. She's got Little Women coming out um, uh, later this year. I mean, she is just on such an incredible high right now, and this film, you can very much tell why. I mean, what she does in this film with the character of Danny is outstanding. It's easily one of the best performances I have seen all year. Danny is someone who she is very troubled. There's a lot of fears that she keeps up boggled up inside of her and a lot of trauma that she does have to face as a character. And the way the Pew goes about it, I think is so well done because you see someone like Danny, like I said, who is someone that is very reserved and someone who you can tell throughout the film is getting more increasingly uncomfortable with this community. She doesn't really want to be there at first, but she really does go through a huge transformation here, and I think Pew did such an incredible job, but especially in scenes where she doesn't really say much, just the expression on her face, it tells you so much about the character, and a lot of that really is due to Pew as an actor. She just does such an incredible job. There's one scene especially with her, that could have come off really corny, but because of the way Pew did it, it just felt like such a natural and raw response to what was going on. It reminded me of what Colette did last year, but it's a different type of performance, and I think she did such a fantastic job here. And moving forward, I think she's turning out to be one of the best actresses working today. I will, I mean, I, I've loved her work in other films, but this is easily her best performance yet, and I will definitely be on the lookout for her um, in future films. But someone else who I think also does a really great job is Jack Rayner as Christian, who for me was a very relatable character. Christian is someone who you can tell he still cares about Danny, but he does not feel like he wants to commit as much. He's starting to get away from her. He's sort of just sticking with her because he feels like he needs to, and... I think he did a really great job. You see how distant and just how he really can't really help her anymore. He can't be that emotional support that she needs. And I think he did a really great job with that. I like seeing just how far apart these two really are. And I thought he did such a great job. But the chemistry between these two especially can be really hard to pull off because you're you're doing you are a couple, but you're a couple that is growing apart. So it's kind of hard to 
uh, act that out, but they do such a wonderful job here. It honestly feels like these two have been in a relationship in real life and that they are really growing apart. That's really how great their acting is here. You forget the fact that these are actors. They feel so natural in the role and you really can sense just the tension in their relationship and they do such a great job with that chemistry wise. And their performances really do anchor this entire film. Like I said, it can be a really hard task to play a couple that is growing apart, but they really do handle it in a very natural way. And the rest of the cast as well also gives some really great performances. Uh, someone who's always a standout is Will Poulter, and that is definitely no different here. I thought he was so great. The way that he reacts to this community especially, I mean, it felt very true to how I probably would react in that situation. I thought he was honestly really funny at points. He provides some really nice uh, levity to the film, but he also gives a, just a really great performance in general. I really love where he ended up going. William Jackson Harper I thought was fantastic here. Someone who really surprised the hell out of me, though, who I really haven't seen before, is Wilhelm Borges. Uh, I really have not seen this actor in really anything before, but I was very impressed by him here. I thought he did a really great job in this film. He is someone who is part of this community, so he knows a lot of the ins and outs of what's going on, and the way that he reacts to things, again, considering that this is his family, it felt very real, and I thought he definitely did a really great job as well. He has really great chemistry with the entire cast, and Really just these um, characters, they work so well together. I really thought the entire ensemble was great, and everyone really did an excellent job in this film. So now let's get to the directing and the writing, which I mean, as to be expected, Ari Aster uh, is such a talent. And with this film especially, I think he fully solidifies himself as one of the best out there right now. I mean, his directing here, it's even more confident than Hereditary. Hereditary, I think he threw everything at the wall and kind of saw what sticks. Here, he seems like he has a very good idea of what he's trying to do. It's not like he did it with Hereditary, it's just here it feels even more well realized. And what I really love about this film is that, unlike Hereditary, which was so dark and depressing, this film isn't like that. There definitely is a darkness that looms over the entire film, but he tries to give it a sense of tranquility. He tries to give it a sense of this sort of ethereal sort of tone throughout the whole thing, and I think he does a really great job with that, and that's mainly because of the sort of story that we're surrounding, which, just jumping into the writing, this film is so well done, and I think he does a really great job with telling the story, because again, unlike Hereditary, um, which was a very dark and just depressing story, this one starts off, and it's not even really a horror movie. There always is a sense of eeriness that, like I said, is in the background. You're always kind of feeling it. But the way the movie is done, it's not like Hereditary. It's much more, and it, and I'll just say right now, like I'm not really going to compare it to Hereditary all that much because I really don't think that as films they are comparable. These are two very different works, and... Yes, but the writing especially is a very good example of that, because similar, yes, it is a character piece, but it's a different kind of character piece. It starts off much more small scale in that way, but especially when it comes to the relationship we're following in this movie, I mean, the entire film really is about relationships, and especially for someone like me who has been in some toxic relationships before, I thought it was very well portrayed, because essentially the movie is about two people who, from the beginning, I mean, these two we know should not be together, but they stay with each other because it just, see, it just feels easy to, so they're trying to force their love and eventually they have to come to that conclusion that you just can't force it. You have to eventually just take that step and realize that this just isn't going to work out. And it makes the film feel that much more human in that way. We've all been in a relationship before that we want to work out, and we try desperately to make it work, but we know in the back of our minds that it isn't working. You know, the spark that we had, it is gone, and it's not going to just magically come back. And that's something that Christian and Danny really have to face in this film. And you can understand why they don't want to uh, just end it all. For Danny, she's someone who's going through a very personal tragedy. I'm not going to get into it too much, but there's a lot that she is dealing with, and that mainly is the catalyst for 
why their relationship is crumbling, why things are really starting to go south for them. And for Christian, he feels that he needs to be there for emotional support. He feels like he needs to be with her because this is someone that uh, she can rely on, even though that isn't even really working anymore. You know, what he does for her, it's not enough. She still is feeling that, um, just, she's, she's still feeling that anguish and that pain, and Christian is not helping her in the way that he needs to, and I think they do a really great job with telling that story for sure. And they do a really great job with just showing how far apart these two are. Something as subtle as Christian not remembering how long these two have been together, or him forgetting Danny's birthday and things like that, eventually turns into things that are far more problematic. And I think they did a really great job of that. Just felt very real in that sense. You know, when you're in a relationship that is deteriorating, you know, the shit's not going to hit the fan until much later on. The more you continue to force it, as I said, the worse it's going to get. And we really do see that for Danny and Christian. Eventually, I'm not going to spoil it, but there is a moment where the two kind of realize just how much this isn't working and how they really can't fix it in any way. There is no repairing this relationship and it just felt so real in that sense. And I know that Ari Aster said that he wrote this movie because of a bad breakup. And you really do see the impact that this has had on him. You really do see, um, again, just how how much that can affect you, and I think he did a really great job with that here. And because of how much you care about these two characters, when they start to ingrain themselves into this community more, uh, you really do feel it. They spend a very large majority of the movie apart, and it works very well in that way, and I think that's something that was definitely very well done. But also just getting into this cult. I mean, the way things are done here, I think it's even creepier than Ari Aster's previous work, because what we see here, I mean, holy shit. The, the way things start off, you think it's going to be really welcoming, and it's going to be something very peaceful and fun. Um, but just seeing what this cult does and the sort of things they do... I mean, I, I never want to go to Sweden. I, I can say that right now. I can actively say this film gives you every single reason why you should never go to Sweden because I'm pretty sure that cults like this do exist, the types of things that they do. And you realize to them are normal. They don't bat an eye at any of these things. It's really creepy to see, but the way they go about it, again, it really feeds into the idea of what Christian and Danny are really dealing with, and it kind of forces them to confront it, and I think they do a really great job with that for sure. And they both have different experiences as well. I'm not going to get into it too much, but the way that they react to this cult, the different reasons why they are there, and the way they start to get uh, invested into this community are both very different for them, and that's something else that I think they did a very good job with telling for sure. But the film is also tapping into the idea of just how dangerous the idea of conforming is. You know, we all want to try to acclimate to society, and that's something that these characters try to do, but when you see the way that these certain, uh, you know, the way that this cult reacts to things, you begin to realize just how dangerous it really is. I mean, they all really do feel the same in that way, and... It makes it that much scarier to watch, and I think that's another really great message that this film does hit on, the idea of conformity and how dangerous it really can be here. And because of that, I honestly think that even if you liked Hereditary, I could see a lot of people not liking this film because they simply can't handle it. This film is way more graphic. This film shows you things that I truly am never going to forget. There's one moment especially in the first act of this film that I can I can honestly say is probably one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen. And because that I don't know if this film has that rewatchability like Hereditary, um... But again, I really do applaud Aster for not shying away from that stuff. He clearly did do his research when it comes to pagan cults like this and the type of stuff that they do. I mean, it's it's crazy, but he did a very good job with capturing that for sure. And again, the way it feeds into Christian and Danny's relationship is truly genius, and I love the way all that stuff is done. And like I said as well, the movie actually does have a lot more humor than you'd expect, which in this situation, considering how weird this community is, it actually made a lot of sense to put that humor in there. The way Will Poulter reacts to things, it feels very natural. He almost feels like the most human out of all of the characters populating the film. However, what they do brilliantly with that, and what Ari Aster continues to excel at, is he will take scenes that start off really humorous, and he will take it in a very disturbing direction that you're almost 
almost like, why was I laughing at that? Why It, it kind of misleads you into thinking this is going to be more lighthearted and more fun than Hereditary, but the direction he takes it in is shockingly shockingly disturbing and he does a really great job with that and uh that's something that Ari Aster has just done an incredible job with like I said is how much he doesn't hold back and really just how brilliant of a storyteller he is the way he's able to kind of mislead you into thinking that and the way that he injects this humor here it could have felt jarring but because of the situation it makes a lot of sense and it just makes it feel more real because of that so yeah, the writing here is fantastic. I'd love to talk about it more, but that would involve spoilers, and I don't want to get into that. Cinematography here, though. I mean, regardless if you like this film or not, I think we can all collectively say that going into an Ari Aster film, something that we are going to be expecting, especially after this film, is that we're going to get some of the best-looking films of the- one of the best-looking films of the year, and that definitely is no different here. And just like how Hereditary had, like, those certain, uh, sequences that kind of look like miniature figures, they do sort of like that with Midsummer, but it's almost like paintings and art, and the way that, uh, Ari Aster is able to construct it, I mean, it's- it's just genius the way he does it, and the cinematographer for this film, um, did such an incredible job with that, but also the contrast of the darkness of Hereditary and the bright, overly saturated look of this movie, it works so well. It's so saturated even, to the point where you feel creeped out. You feel like you're trapped here, and they do a really great job with that here. It's kind of doing that to mask the fact that we are in a very dangerous and just uh, vile um, area, and I think they did a really great job with that here for sure, because, you know, you're in a location where the sun barely ever sets, it's rarely ever dark, so there is a lot that goes on, and there's a lot of space to play around with the uh, brightness of this film and you know you wouldn't think that that adds a lot to a film but it really does here and I think it was a very inspiring move to do it that way. I really love the way the cinematography was constructed here. There are so many incredible shots, and uh, again, uh, they're just they're some of the best of the entire year. I love the way it's done. But the other thing they do really well with the cinematography is how they will put you in certain characters' um, perspectives, because throughout a lot of the film, the characters are consuming all these different like tonics and drugs and things like that, and it's making them... Uh, very loopy. It's making them very high and things like that. And the way they play around with like the um, the picture. Sometimes the picture itself is like flopping around. Sometimes certain things. I mean, the film can get quite trippy, and they do a really great job with that. And I really love that about the cinematography here for sure. The score as well is so great, but the best thing about the score is that, uh, similar to the tone of this movie, which, again, throughout the whole thing, it feels kind of relaxing in that way, the score also is like that. Even when something really horrifying is going on, and when something that is just extremely disturbing, the music that plays is really beautiful. It's almost trance-like, and I love the way the Hacks and Cloak, uh, constructed the score. It's one of the best of the entire year, and, uh, definitely... Again, similar to Hereditary, it's going to get very overlooked uh, this year. Similar to a lot of things in this movie, but that definitely is going to get overlooked. And the editing. I've heard a lot of people bring this up before. For me, though, it wasn't an issue. I feel like this movie needed to be long for the story that they were trying to tell. There's a lot, especially considering the bait and switch that goes on. I mean, the film gets more increasingly like a horror film as it goes on. In fact, I'd say the first act, it's not even really a horror film. It's more of just a character drama. It's really once we get into that third act that it fully does become a horror film. And I think you needed the movie to be as long as it is um, in order for them to do that. And I think they did a really great job with that, uh, for sure. So for me, the film honestly really never dragged. I was pretty much invested the entire time. And I think they did a really great job with that here. Like I said, though, in terms of scares, the movie definitely does not fall short at all. There are many moments throughout the film that are just absolutely terrifying, and I think they do a really great job with that. And look, there is one thing I can absolutely say. There is no director that knows how to fuck me up more than Ari Aster. I mean, similar to Hereditary, during the entire third act of this film, I was just on the edge of my seat, covered in goosebumps, just like sweating from head to toe, and I don't know how he does it. I really don't know, but he gives me this eerie feeling that most directors just aren't able to do. I've mentioned this before. A lot of horror movies, they just don't scare me very much because they feel very similar. But something about Ari Aster, he just... I don't know, he's able to really... 
really reel me in and get me and just make me disturbed in a way that other directors aren't able to do it. And that's something I can very much give him credit for. And he definitely excelled at that here for sure. Now, something that I think a lot of people are going to be very divided on is the way the movie ends, which I will say, at first coming out of this movie, I didn't really like it. I was just kind of sitting there thinking, does this really make a lot of sense? Is it really satisfying? However, the more I began to think about it, the more I really did love it. I feel like the way the ending is done, it really does help um, support the main theme that the movie's really trying to drive at, the whole idea of what they're trying to do, and I think it makes a lot of sense. And I can understand if some people don't like it because of the way things do end for sure, um, but for me, I think it works perfect and I think they did a really great job with that here. So with everything I've just said, you pretty much come to the conclusion that this is as good as Hereditary, and not quite. There are a couple things that do hold it back for me. Uh, nothing too big, because like I said, the movie for the most part is fantastic. It does a really great job with telling the story about like toxic relationships and things like that. Um, but there are a couple things that I do think hold this film back slightly. One of them being that as much as I did love getting into this community and the different things that they do, I would have liked to get to know a few of the members a little bit more. I think you could have fleshed them out a bit more, just get to know some of them. I'm not saying we needed to spend time with every single one of them, but there's one character in particular that I feel like could have had just a little bit more to do, and I would have liked uh, to see that here. And then this one isn't really a flaw, it's more just sort of a nitpick. There are things that go on in this movie that I think I really need to rewatch. Uh, there are just certain things that happen that I don't fully understand. I think I really do need to give the film a second look, and then hopefully I can make sense of it. Other than that, though, this film is absolutely fantastic. It is a really great way of telling a story of just a really toxic relationship. It does a really great job of uh, fleshing out this community quite well. Um, the cinematography here is just absolutely gorgeous, some of the best in the entire year. The score is absolutely beautiful. The performances, especially from Florence Pugh, are some of the best you will see all year. Ari Aster is a true talent, and I think regardless how you think about this film, Ari Aster pretty much solidifies himself as a can't, you know, a can't miss director. A director where whatever he's doing, you have to see immediately. I mean, this, I'm going to be there day one. No matter what he's doing, I'm going to be there. I'm going to very much support him. And I think he is one of the best out there. And also, it's just really great to see an original film with so many franchises just bombing and things like that. It's really great to go to the theater and see a movie that is original and is unapologetically original in that way. A movie that feels different. A movie that actually is trying to say something and I think does an excellent job with it. And I think that alone is enough a reason to recommend this film. Like I said though, this is a film where you should very much know what you're getting yourself into. It is much more disturbing. It is far more graphic than anything in Hereditary, but I think it really does excel that and I think it is that much better because of it. Like I said, it's almost just as good as Hereditary. It's just those couple things that really do hold it back and honestly on a rewatch, I can see it improving for me, um, but it really is just those few things. Other than that, this film is pretty much everything I want it to be. So for all those reasons and more, I am definitely going to give Midsummer in A. Seriously, guys, if you have not checked out either of these films, they are of the highest recommendation for sure. Ari Aster is a true talent, and I cannot wait to see what else he's going to do next. I know he said he's not doing another horror film, which is cool, because I, I actually do want to see him dabble into other stuff, but definitely this is a true master of his craft, and uh, I cannot wait to see what he's going to do from here on out. But either way, guys, to my review of Midsummer, the most guys saw this movie overall, lift your thoughts, and we'll see you guys in my next video, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.